So I've been using After Effects for nearly 15 years, and to start the year off right, here are 20 tips that help you command After Effects like a boss and give you an edge on all your upcoming work. Let's jump in. Starting off, we have a simple tip. Anytime you're using shape layer lines and strokes, instead of working with those ugly butt caps, you can go into stroke and go to taper. From here, you can adjust the length and ease to thin out the points of your line. So if you want a beautiful butt, check out taper. If you're duplicating your layers to create a loop or to continue your animations, this is messy and unnecessary. Just right click the layer you want to loop Go to Time and click Enable Time Remapping. Then just Alt click the stopwatch and type the Loop Out Open Close expression. Now you can expand the out point of your layer to repeat the animation forever. After Effects is a great software to work with vector objects, such as Illustrator files. When you're working with a vector object and you want to animate a specific design element, you can right click the layer and select Create Shapes from Vector Layer. This will create an editable shape layer with every component of your object. For example, I can add wiggle paths to the flames to help enhance the animation in a matter of moments. It actually surprises me that there's plenty of people who are unaware about the hundreds of text presets that come with After Effects. So if you don't feel like animating text, go to Animation Presets, Text. Then drag and drop any preset onto your title and watch your text fly. Speaking of text, alignment is so important when it comes to positioning any of your graphics. If you're trying to center your text by hand, you're doing it wrong. By going to Window Align, this brings up the Align panel. From here, you can center align graphics in the middle of your project, or you can align multiple layers to each other when they're selected, so align responsibly. Anytime you enable Motion Blur, the amount of blur is always fixed. To make your motion blur more or less blurry, go to Composition Settings and click on Advanced. From here, you can change the shutter angle and even other settings to make your motion blur stand out to your taste. Our seventh tip is a vital lifesaver to your hard drive. If you've never done this before, go to Preferences, Media, and Disk Cache. By default, After Effects will cache your projects so you can play back through them instantly. However, those caches take up space on your computer. So every now and then you should empty your disk cache or at the very least adjust the maximum disk cache size so After Effects does not eat up your hard drive. Do you ever have so many layers that it becomes distracting within your timeline? Well, instead of pre-composing your layers that you may not want to pre-compose, you can just hide the layers with the shy icon. Just click this icon on the layers you want to hide, then click the shy icon at the top of your timeline to hide or reveal them. Another helpful timeline icon is continuously rasterized. This is the setting next to the shy button. Anytime you need to scale up a layer, it becomes pixelated. This is no good. But if you click continuously rasterize, this gives the layer infinite fidelity, removing those pixels. Unfortunately, this only works with vectors and internal After Effects layers. Before we move on to our next tip, here's a bonus tip. You can get 100 free templates from us for After Effects and Premiere Pro along with our breathable Motion Duck extension. This is where you can browse templates and apply them into any of your projects. Then you can easily adjust the parameters of the control layer and boom, a simple way to impress your clients or your parents. But also, we have over 25,000 other templates available to you to help assist you in any of your projects. So whether you need seamless transitions, infographics, graphic effects, or just creative elements, you can check out everything for your future projects, including our free pack with the link below. Okay, this tip I hope you don't actually see, but this tip is working with drop shadows. It's always so easy to catch when an object has a drop shadow to help separate it from the background. As designers, we should avoid this. So when using drop shadows, what I do is set the opacity very low and increase the softness of the drop shadow then duplicate it and slightly increase the opacity and its softness. And if needed, do another drop shadow and truly increase the softness. This technique should help in making your graphics stand out on those stubborn backgrounds. Understanding anchor points is a must in After Effects. Simply, an anchor point is the center of your animation for your layer. For example, the anchor point on this layer is in the middle. So if I adjust a rotation, the object will animate from the center, but if I use the pan behind tool to move the anchor point to the bottom, now the object will more or less do an orbit around the anchor point when we adjust the rotation. 
When things are moving at a snappy pace, you cannot forget about snapping. At the top of After Effects, you can enable snapping with a checkbox. So when you move your layers, you'll be able to have an easy guide to be with you in times of turmoil. It's common to be familiar with the depth of field option within camera layers, but when you click on, nothing happens. This is because of two things. One, you need to make sure that there is Z position depth among all the layers in your scene. And two, you need to adjust the focus distance and aperture to intensify how out of focus your scene will really be. Have you ever wanted to add a mask to a shape layer, but it only creates another shape? Well, when your shape layer is selected and you have the pen tool or a shape tool, you can click Tool Creates Mask. Now you can hack away at your delicious shapes. If you want to bend your text or make it follow a path, we'll create a mask on your text layer. Then go into the text layer and go to Path Options. Set the path to your mask. And now you can animate your text with first margin to animate it along your custom path. If you want to remove and replace objects within your video, create a mask around said object and set the mode to subtract. If you need to keyframe the mask to follow the object, please do that. Then go to Window and click Content Aware Fill. Increase the alpha expansion by a touch and then click Generate Fill Layer. After a few moments, your objects will be removed and replaced with its surroundings. Have you ever opened up an old project and just do not know where the source media is at on your computer? Well, you can right click the layer, go to Reveal and click Reveal in Explorer. And there's the file. Also, if you're working within a messy project file, you can click Reveal Layer Source and Projects. It's always good to be organized. Did you know that you can use mask on effects only? Let's say we don't want the glow effects to be applied to a specific area of this layer. So I can create a mask, then I can go to effects and click the plus icon next to compositing options and boom. Now my effects will not be applied to that area of the mask. If you're still animating text with the transform properties, please stop. Instead, go to animate and add any property that you want. Add multiple ones if you want to as well. Then adjust those properties however you see fit and add keyframes for start. Then animate it from 0% to 100%. You can also go into the advanced tab and select randomize order. So mess around these settings for a bit to command your text animations. All right, the last tip is all about adjusting keyframes. When you need to change the speed of keyframes together, select them all and hold Alt on your keyboard. When you drag the keyframes, this will adjust them all together at the same proportion. I hope some of these tips will help you in your After Effects career. Remember to get our free pack with the link below to help you in all your After Effects and Premiere Pro projects and always be creating.